Hey everyone, happy Pride Month. So, time for a full disclosure. You're probably wondering why I am making a video right now, or releasing a video, because I had mentioned before that I was going to stop making video. If you haven't watched my previous video on that, I would highly recommend that you do, because it is kind of relevant to what I'm doing right now. So, I had been thinking, I cannot create proper video essays right now for, the, for many reasons, but I can maybe do something else. Uh, what I want to do, I want to create a series of vlogs or vlogs um, in which I basically do something and explain something or talk about something like I'm doing right now. For example, I could be sitting here with my bisexual lighting and talk about the subject, or I could be cooking a meal and talk about another subject. Um, this has several advantages for me. Uh, first off, it makes it a lot easier for me to, they're a lot easier for me to make. They're usually easier to set up, usually less work to edit, among other things. And secondly, there are, they are usually also a bit more, they're a bit more rough around the edges, but at least I can still create content. They're not exactly what I want, so, so there, there won't be full, fully fledged video essays, at least don't expect them all to be of that kind of quality. But that way I can still satisfy my urge of being creative and doing something while, while also being able to, you know, do stuff. Um, that way you people all can also really have content. Um, several several things though there are how long for the moment this does mean that video essays won't really be a thing for the moment how long this is going to take I don't know I'm gonna be complete at the risk of being a bit parasocial I've been wanting to move out of this apartment for quite some time now for at least a few years now um, when this is and I'm actually planning on moving hopefully somewhere in the coming year maybe Maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit earlier. I cannot give an exact time frame because, you know, things are kind of rough for me right now in terms of work, in terms of um, mental health, etc. So I cannot really give an exact time frame. I am hoping, I, and I am planning, if I'm going to be moving to another house, I'm hoping to move to a house with a bit more space. So I can hopefully work easier on video essays and also make video essays the way I want them to do, with sketches, with you know, fun stuff, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that is what I want to do. I want to, so to reiterate, I want to create a series of vlogs while I'm still living here, in which, which are basically more rough around the edges videos in which I talk about the subject or do something while talking about the subject, etc. That's the direction I'm going to. This is also why I'm here right now, and because it's Pride Month, for right now, this is why I'm making this video, because it's Pride Month, June is Pride Month. So this is why I'm sitting here wearing a skirt with my bisexual lighting and wearing uh, lipstick. So yeah, that's why I'm here. So let's talk about Pride Month, shall we? So first of all, I want to make one thing very clear, don't expect this kind of level with the color lighting and the lipstick and the androgynous stuff, don't expect it to be common. This is, I'm actually pretty uncomfortable right now because it's warm today and I'm wearing makeup and I cannot sit in, the, in my ventilator and I'm basically making stuff up as I go and improvising. So this is not the most comfortable thing for me to be in. I'm not contra points, don't expect me to be sitting in a pot with rose petals anytime soon. I don't have the budget for that. So, Pride. How... What can I tell you about Pride? So, Pride is, for those, who, for those who have been living under a rock for the last 30 years, Pride is a celebration, if you will, in which we celebrate the varieties of human sexualities and gender expressions. Pride is really about being yourself, but also about celebrating being yourself. As most of you are probably well aware, um, people of the, of the more queer persuasions have not exactly been treated very well historically. Um, you had, of course, uh, in more recent history, you had, of course, uh, gay rights activists and trans rights activists 
uh, fighting in Stonewall, that's a very good example, which basically kick-started the modern gay movement, as far as I can tell. Uh, but you also have to think about further back, you know, uh, gay people have been, and queer people have been persecuted and still are persecuted till this day in many places in the world for a large variety of reasons, most of whom are bullshit. You know, because you know, the straights love oppressing people in this regard. Um, right, so what does pride mean for me? Uh, surprisingly, despite the fact that the Netherlands has a very rich pride tradition, though ours are usually on different, those ours are usually on July and not in, in June, for example, in, this, in the city where I live, Tilburg, on July you have something called Pink Monday, which is the first Monday of the Carnival of Tilburg, which is the largest carnival or fair in the Benelux, in which, you know, it's a Pink Monday where, you know, you have all kinds of queer people who can express themselves, you have all kinds of activities, and it's probably fun. Um, personally, I don't really participate a whole lot in Pride, because most Pride parades and Pride activities are sensory overload hell and as you know with my autism I am um, very susceptible to a huge amount of external input visual stimuli, auditory stimuli, basically anything so as a result I don't really participate really in pride stuff but I do to a certain degree celebrate pride um, or at least I've begun to celebrating it which is also why I'm making this video. Part of it is, you know, me making something for Pride. Uh, and I give my own thoughts on the entire thing. Um, so let's talk a bit about my own sexuality and gender, shall we? Um, regarding my own sexuality and gender, for the longest time in my life, it was a subject that I did not really give a whole lot of thought about. Like, I was, I'm going to be completely honest here, I was a pretty late bloomer when it comes to many things, including sexuality, sexual emotions, and gender emotions. So I didn't really start really developing until I was like 15, 16. Before that, I had no, I didn't even have much knowledge regarding sex. And I also didn't really care about it. I had better things to do, like playing uh, with, playing, playing with strategy games, uh, playing on my game of color, trading Pokemon cards, that kind of stuff. Um, and watching cartoons, which I always found, found to be way more interesting than anything related to sex. Still do, to a certain extent. Um, so, my, I, so, before that, I basically identified as straight. Because, you know, that was the norm. I was like, yeah, sure, I don't really give a fuck. I like women. Before that, I had fallen in love. Before that, actually, there was a girl in my second year of high school in which I, which I, which I had fallen in love with, who rejected me. <laughs> you know that goes. Um, but before that, I didn't really give a shit. Usually, throughout most of high school, it started to develop, but I didn't really care. Like I had a few crushes, mostly on women. Uh, but in general speaking, I didn't really care a whole lot about it. It wasn't really important. I had other things to do. Then my parents divorced and that entire mess started. Um, but eventually I went to college. And going to college meant that I had to travel a lot with public transport, with buses, with trains, with basically everything else. So, um, what, what did this mean to me? This meant that I saw all, usually a quite a large variety of people more than I had seen before, and I also came in contact with a large variety of people. And really, how this went for me is actually relatively simple. Um, I sat in a, I was sitting in a bus, um, basically just minding my own business. Usually I, was, usually I would listen to music like the soundtrack of Command and Conquer, that kind of stuff, because you know I'm a fucking nerd. Um, and um, I was, I was looking at a girl, I saw a girl, and I was like, huh, oh, she looks cute. And then I saw a guy next to her. He was kind of like, you know, it's basically my taste in men. That guy basically dictated my taste in men, if you can call it. Uh, kind of like this emo, twink-like person. 
Also, if you're watching this, I'm sorry to call you an emo twink. <laughs> uh, and I basically looked at him and I was like, whoa, that guy's hot. That's basically how it went. And I went out, then I basically went like, yeah, I guess I'm bi now. Because I, I knew, of course, that, that sexualities existed. Not because of, because at the time I was on Tumblr a lot, and, uh, you know, that's where I learned all about a lot of sexuality and gender expression. Uh, which, in hindsight, probably wasn't the best place, but still better than basically whatever, whatever my sexual, sex, sexual education was. Um, and, uh, yeah, I went like, oh, I guess I'm bi now. I didn't really care, I didn't really so much came out of the closet, as the fact that I wasn't really in the closet to begin with. Um, I told my mom and she was like, yeah, sure, fine, just as long as you don't get into trouble and be safe. Standard mom stuff. Also, mom, if you're watching this, thank you for your support. And uh, you must be very confused why I'm wearing lipstick right now. I'll get back to that later. Uh, but yeah, that's basically my sexuality. Eventually, I found out about non-binary people, the day and the intersex people, the day existed. And I went like, oh well, guess I'm pansexual now. So yeah, technically speaking, I'm pansexual, um, though I usually say that I'm bisexual because it's easier for people to understand. And, if I'm, and I'm not an expert, so don't quote me on this. I'm going to make a spicy take here, but I think that practically speaking, bisexuality and pansexuality are, well, not identical, but have similar results. You know, bisexuality is like, you love people on both ends of the both ends throughout the entire gender spectrum, and pansexuality is basically more like a rejection of the gender spectrum. You you're just fine with whoever you find. You know that's that's how that works. Um, it should also be noted, and this is something. This is a negative stereotype. I unfortunately used to perpetuate in the past. Like pansexual people and bisexual people, we are not like sex crazed perverts and maniacs. That's not a thing. If anything, I think, if anything, I kind of dislike that behavior mostly because I actually tend to be very picky when it comes to my partners, which I, you know, don't have, or not, never, not really have, have. And um, I tend to be quite picky, actually. Um, so, you know, that's how that goes. Um, and gender, and so yeah, I, I didn't really come out of the closet. I will say, I will say I was very lucky that my parents were already divorced and I didn't have contact with my father when I figured out that I was pansexual because I think if my parents were still together and I still had to live with my father all day, I don't think he would have accepted it. Uh, really his loss, to be honest. Um, it's not really my intention to, you know, really shame him for him, but, you know, conservatives. Conservatives are going to conserve and makes people people's life a mess. Um, yeah, so yeah, that is uh, basically my sexuality. The subject of gender is an ongoing subject. Um, I think the first, I wouldn't exactly call myself transgender, but I wouldn't exactly call myself cisgender either. I definitely have certain non-binary emotions, if you can call it that. Going back, back quite far, actually, I have memory, vivid memories of waking up as a woman, uh, in, 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 dreaming that I was a woman, that I had, like, you know, breasts and stuff. And, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't really pay attention to it. I thought it was like, oh, it's just another pervert teenage fantasy. Uh, basically, that's how I saw it at the time. Um, then... In October last year, September, October last year, I began working on the Homestuck video. And I began thinking about the time I cosplayed women characters. And then I went like, oh fuck. Well, it's not really that. I'm making it a bit more dramatic than it actually is because, you know, I don't really experience dysphoria, which I'm very grateful for because that sounds like hell. And I don't think I'm really transgender. It's more that I don't really have and feel very strongly about the gender binary or the gender spect or the concept of gender in general. If I were to gender myself, I'm not really a man or a woman or non-binary, I am PIM. And PIM is who I am and how I choose to live my life, that is basically my thing. And 
usually I'm fine as I'm doing right now, making this video, playing, fucking a little bit with, you know, gender expression, not really falling in the norm. I like that. It's not really, I think it's more, it's more not really a performance. It's more like, you know, I am Pim, I do my thing and that's fine. It is something I'm still developing though, so I might be eating this words in a, these words in a few years. Um, but I don't think I am really transgender, but also not cisgender, so you know, make of that what you want. And that is really my experiences with gender and sexuality. Um, I do feel, and I don't want to sound really, you know, like I'm drawing parallels or connections or anything, I do feel like I can identify with a lot of transgender people. Um, mostly because, you know, the entire concept of passing I see a lot of similarities between the entire concept of passing and the alt and the concepts that people on the autism spectrum have called masking, which is you know wearing a mask, pretending you are quote unquote neurotypical, you know that kind of stuff. It's kind of like reverse actually, like you know a trans woman will have will be forced by society to really you know be ultra feminine and ultra like. The most girly of girl, so you know, and some trans women are fine with that, and that's fine. Other other trans women aren't fine with that. That's also fine. Like I am not the arbiter of trans hoods or whatever. And on the contrary, I don't want to play that role. I, I don't think I'm qualified for that role. Um, but it's more like as a, as someone, I usually get always people surprised. When they, when I tell them that I am on the autism spectrum, when I have, well, I don't have autism, I am autistic, but language thing, um, and I, they also act surprised, like, no, no, you are autistic, I couldn't tell, and that's really the thing, you can't tell, it's kind of a reverse in that regard, like, and I have to really play a, a role, like a mask, wear a mask, in the matter of speaking, to appear neurotypical to be accepted by society so I do see a few minor similarities there again I'm mostly rambling here don't take it seriously take it all with a grain of salt and do your thing whatever works best for you I don't want to draw offend anyone or draw any conclusions that's not my intention at all so yeah that's basically my gender thing and my sexuality thing and pride for me is basically, you know, a celebration of that. You know, that is why I'm sitting here in a skirt. I'm wearing wearing lipstick, and why I am, uh, and why I'm, you know, I am who I am, and that is fine. And I should accept that. That is what pride means for me. There are a few problems I have with pride. Uh, well, they're not really problems. More like minor nitpicks. Uh, they're not really, I'm not going to talk about kink and pride, I don't even want to get into that discord because I think, I think it is a bullshit discord and I think we have more pressing matters to work with. Um, but it's more like pride, especially the last 10, yeah, 10, 15 years, over here at least, has become very commercialized. You know, you have like large companies who usually don't give a fuck about gay people or queer people. Uh, putting a rainbow flag behind their behind their logo on social media. You have them sponsoring pride floats or prides uh, and having their own spots in there. And you know, them appealing to queer people to sell more products. And that's something I'm not very fond of. I think especially liberal, especially American liberal queer folk are too happy with that. And I don't think they quite understand that for the longest time, queer people were literally beaten to death by the police, and I'll come back to that later, the police, and also rejected from companies, they could lose their job, people could lose their job, they could lose their family, they could lose, basically, ostracized from society, anything. And, and that, that was at best, at worst, at worst they simply got murdered, or chemically castrated, like what happened with Alan Turing. Poor guy. Um, and, um, you know, it's not very, it's not, it's not a very, you know, so if I see a company flouting the Pride colors during Pride Month and the rest of the, and I still hear about the abuse that 
queer workers get to those companies, I'm like, you hypocritical, goddamn fucking assholes. Like, you didn't give a shit about us for the longest time, and now it suddenly has become profitable. You, you appeal to us, you claim to be our allies, go fuck yourselves. And like, sure, that's rough, and I know I'm very, being very blunt here, but you, and you know, capitalism gonna capitalism, especially pink capitalism gonna pink capitalism. There's not really anything I can change about that. But I would like very much for the organizers of Pride Parade, you know, not to let those assholes in. Especially not the cops, because that's a thing now, like many Pride Parades now have special cop fl floats and, and cop wagons or police wagons who participate in Pride. And I don't even mean about security, like I get that, I don't like it, but I get that police that the Pride Parade organizers kind of have to talk with municipal governments, that they have kind of have to have the police there, or else they can't keep their own parades. They can't do their own parade. They can't do the, do the thing. So I kind of get that. I don't like it, but I get it. But what I don't get, what I don't like is the fucking police, who have, who have spent years beating gay people, and still do in many countries. Like, most police, uh, in my experience, most police... Uh, Men are incredibly reactionary and homophobic and transphobic, etc. And who just like suddenly, uh, suddenly they're supposed to be our allies. And I have the same words for him as, as I have for the for those companies. You goddamn hypocrites! What the fuck are you doing here? Get the fuck out! But you know, I can't, again, this is not something I on my own can change. So you know. Not really much I can say about that, besides, you know, so those are some minor problems I have with Pride. So, you know, it would be nice if we don't let the fucking cops who beat us all day and, uh, and, the, and the companies that fuck us over all, all the time and export us all the time share in our, you know, our moments of expression. I don't think they have that right. And I don't think they should have that right. Yeah, that's basically all I have to say regarding Pride. I think Pride is a good moment to reflect on yourself and look at yourself and be happy with who you are. Like we're all products, well not really products of our own creation, but we're all, you know, who we, we are, we're all who we are. We can't really change much about who we are. And I'm glad we are now living in a time period where we can at least express that even if it is a little bit. But, you know, keep up the good fights, you know, support uh, your pride charities, support your local pride, you know, workers, support your pride artists, etc. The queer artists, support them, and that's all fine. Um, I would like to wish everyone, um, moving forward, um, I will be making more of these type of videos in the, in the near future. I ha I'm already thinking about making, working on my next videos. Video. How long this is going to take, I don't know. I still need to arrange some stuff. But yeah, um, have a, have a happy, pri happy Pride Month, everyone, and have a good one. And I wish you all the best.